Hello YouTube, this is Das Gregor, and welcome back to a Gen 2 in review. Today I'm going to be talking about setting up a Windows Display Manager for your GUI interface in Gen 2. Many years I've been asked and complained to by new Gen 2 users that they don't like having Gen 2 boot to a command prompt and then them have to decide what to do next. And I think that has to do with the fact that a lot of people have become very GUI centric where they don't know what to do at the command line. They're not DOS people. You know, for instance, from the old days when, when you booted up in a computer and all you got was a DOS prompt and when Windows first came out for instance you actually had to start Windows from scratch the way you do uh, Gen 2 GUI interfaces if you don't set this up so today I've set up a <clears throat> I've set up a virtual box Gen 2 I built it compiled it I used the gen kernel for the kernel just, just to make it super simple because I didn't want to have to go through and and do things for the virtual box uh, session. I installed XFCE. So without further ado, let's minimize that. Pull up OpenBox here. Start this Gen 2 session and go from there. As you see, yeah, I built this actually. Uh, the base a while back so it's using kind of an older kernel 3.8.12 no big deal it'll still do for our session you know it pretty much just had the villain of vanilla bones on there as you can see though it's got a lot of junk it really doesn't need it's kind of bloated that's one of the that's one of the disadvantages to using gen kernel to build everything because the init ram script and everything else really does a lot to kind of make it large but for simplicity it's a much better way to get things done so let's take that and just bring it up just a little bit as you can see while it boots into this setup there we are I'll log into it now the reason why I am using VirtualBox to do this is because since WDM, which is Windows Display Manager and all that, requires rebooting to show that it works, I felt that in this type of an environment it'd be easier than doing it in my test partition and showing you because I'd have to stop and start the video numerous times. So, the resource that I am using for this is actually right here it's the Gen 2 wiki for the XFCE config and what we're going to be focusing on is this right here the graphical login which as you can see is super simple just a few lines of code so I'm pulling that up bringing back up our virtual box now if we were here we do a start X it's gonna go ahead and just load XFCE Oh, it's not. Oh, 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 silly me. I have been booting this and setting this up in, um, what do you call it? I've been doing this in root, and I just created my user account, and the one step I forgot is this right here. What we need to do to make this work for star X, when you first start up and install XORG and everything else, you need to make sure that this command echo is set up in the xinit rc and also since we're using the console kit we actually need to make sure we use this command instead so what we do to do that let's bring this up a little bit more so we can see our command line there we echo exec start xfce4 dash dash with dash ck dash launch we're going to create the file now remember I've said that a couple times 
if you want to write something to a file, and I forgot my last quotation there, then <clears throat> if you want to replace everything, you use the, the one arrow. If you want to append to the end of it, you'd use two arrows. Since this file isn't created, we use the one arrow. I'm going to go ahead and tell it that we want the root of our user and it's dot x init rc and now that we've done that we should be able to start x and it should work fine just something to remember guys if you're ever building and you've installed everything and you're wondering why isn't this starting why isn't this working we're just going to use this this is the first time I've logged in to use uh, the XFCE with this as you can see everything just looks vanilla plain Jane nothing too fancy but it works and let's go ahead and log out of here because we're gonna try and make it so that it works on boot up without having to use the start X command now, as I said we're gonna be using that little bit of code that's down here graphical login. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that WDM is starting at default. rc-update add xdm default. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take the init script ah, and you must do that as root. What that's going to do is it's going to take the init script that's located at etc init dot d and wdm is right over here which you're not being able to see my mouse because uh, as soon as I go in there it disappears but if you look at that list these are all of the initialization scripts that your system can run wdm is over on the right it's already on there and we're good to go now what that does is that will start the windows display manager on boot up but that's not the last thing we need to do we actually have to set up a display manager now, for XFCE, you're going to want to use something simple. So you're not going to want to do GDM, which is the GNOME Display Manager, or KDM, which is the K, uh, KDE Display Manager. Yeah, you can, but for this, we're going to go ahead and use the example that they're using and use the simple Display Manager, which is Slim. So we want to emerge that in there. We use the dash AV. They use the T as well, and that's for the tree, which you can use or I I don't mind I'm gonna go ahead and do it for the fact that it has it in its little demonstration here oh uh, and because I'm not super user let's do that first you know guys I always forget about that because I have so many little things set up in mind that just automatically redo it for me and add it to me in my main box So. Why I'm always forgetting about making sure that the root is working. Like I've always said, though, if you're going to be doing a lot of root stuff, I find it's better instead of having to constantly remember sudo this and sudo that, which stands for super user do. Um, it's it's just better just to go ahead and log in as your root ID, do what you need to do, and then remember get right back out of it. I find it much better just to go ahead make sure you're the administrator make sure you've got all the rights instead of constantly running into little things so it says here that we have some slim themes that it's going to install and the main thing of slim so we say yes it goes ahead and downloads it grabs it unpacks it starts to install it while that goes we will go on and just kind of review what else it says that we need to do while that installs shouldn't take too long so I say so a lot that's going to install slim themes and slim we need to still edit a few extra items so, let's see here it's now installing the finishing up the first one there we're going to have to set up the display manager to equal slim inside of the conf.dxdm. So let's go ahead and switch over to our second tab here. 
I'm just going to go ahead and log in as root. We're going to edit slash etc conf.d wdm or xdm and we're going to change display manager so that it equals slim very important that you tell it in here what display manager you're going to be using save it and the next step is slim can automatically start xfce if you add x session equals xfce in your etc env.d90x session so that sounds like a great idea let's see here it says that we type in echo x session equals slash xfce4 slash quotation did I screw something up here I forgot a quotation somewhere make sure we have that just right echo x say echo x session equals slash quotation xfce slash quotation send that to edc environment dot d ninety x session and we need to do an env dash update ampersand ampersand slash etc profile not that it really matters for those two because we're probably going to end up Oh, oh, goober me. Don't laugh at me, guys. Everybody makes mistakes when they're doing silly stuff. All right. <clears throat> We've set up the X session. We've set up the display manager to equal slim. We're still probably, let's get back over to, all right, all that's installed. So let's reboot. Let's see if this worked. Ah, sudo reboot. There we go. It is now restarting the system. You know, as I've said numerous times, there are so many great resources out there, and I constantly refer back to them. I cannot remember everything that I've learned in the past and set up and configured because I always use the excuse well I've slept since then and so many times I'll have figured it all out and I haven't documented it because there's good resources out there like this right here this I didn't want to set up KDE for instance in this thing because uh, it's it's too much but I found these great resources straight from the XFCE area about how to set it up, get it installed, like right here from, from the very beginning. Okay, you need to make sure, of course, that your X org, so you go to the how to, you get all that running. You need to make sure your profile is set proper to desktop with eSelect. You get your meta file installed. It tells you every little bit that you may need to look at and take care of how to configure it, additional applications you may want. That is one kind of small complaint I do have about XFCE and Gentoo. There are a lot of plugins that you have to install after the fact, and 
I read in a forum that they decided to get rid of the meta package that pulled in all that because it was too difficult to keep updated and to configure all the time and I didn't think that that was really a a good option so as you can see here we've booted up it's rebooted we're not at a command prompt hey looky there we're at username this is slim I'm gonna type in my username Das Krager my password and if all was proper we should see XFCE pop up here and looky there no command line interface now of course the problem with this is and I'm a command line interface type guy if you need to get into the command line interface you're going to have to change a few things or stop the, the Windows Display Manager and reboot which is kind of easy to do I mean if for instance you needed to reboot and get back into the uh, the command line interface from here all you do as your user is sudo and do a rc dash update delete wdm from the default if you use that command right there the next time you reboot you'll be back in the command line interface and if you wanted to start it back up you can either start it again with sudo rc update add wdm default or if you just wanted to start it you could also do you know sudo slash etc slash init dot d slash wdm start which would start it manually I'm not going to do that for now though because we don't need to worry about it and as you see we have now a GUI interface a Windows Display Manager and it boots straight into it now you can do this and customize it for like I said GNOME Display Manager, KDE Display Manager, whichever one you like the best, you can easily set up. There are instructions, of course, for each of those, and it's not that difficult to find them within the Gen2 resources. So hopefully I've helped a few people who have always wondered about starting their GUI automatically without having to go to see the command line interface. And until next time, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, I hope you enjoy it. Do remember that I am very busy this week. I do hope to still have a Linux First Impressions up this Friday, but I am getting ready to head out to the mountains for a few days to do some camping for our American Thanksgiving holiday. I will do everything I can, though, to make sure that these videos are uploaded and ready to go. I may have to do them a little ahead of schedule and upload them while I have internet and then while I'm up in the mountains, if I can get some signal, just activate them and see how that works. I don't have scheduling abilities since I am not sponsored and don't have those kind of things just yet. Maybe someday I'll be able to do these a little bit more ahead of schedule and uh, have them prepped and ready. But until next time, I hope this helps somebody. Thank you for your comments and thank you for all your support. We'll talk with you later. Have a great week. Bye, guys.